G'day legends, it's Warney here, coach of the Warn Dogs, and I've, this is something I've been meaning to do for a little while, and that is having a look at draft settings. Now, a lot of coaches ask, what are the best settings for my league, yada, yada, yada. So I thought how I'd do it is run through the actual settings on the site as I would be setting up a draft league. Now I'm involved in a few different ones, uh, all different types, I guess. So everything from a normal single season draft to keeper leagues where I'm commissioner of, um, but also different sizes. So we'll talk about that as we go through these. So once you get into the site, um, just from that main screen, you can go create a league and there's a few different ways to get there. But once you get to that point, this is what you see. And the first screen, basically asks us to put in some simple info. League name. Let's call it Warney's Wicked Bunch of Legends. I don't know. <laughs> uh, anyway, there it is. Um, so the privacy settings, if you have it on private, that means no one can search for it and find it. They need to have the pin code or the link, which is what you should really do for draft. Um, unless you're trying to set up an open one where you just hope that people will fill it, that sort of thing, um, up to you. Now, the draft type, this is really important. So down here where it does say live, auto or commissioner. So these little things help you understand what they are, the little info boxes, as you've got there. But this one here, so life drafts involve players utilising real-time strategy and reactionary measures to acquire specific available players. Basically, that's where everyone's on their computers and they're all making their picks as they go. Now, the auto draft just goes, whatever you've got in your draft rankings, bang, allow that to happen. Shit. There's absolutely no point of doing that one. And finally, the commissioner drafts require the league commissioners to manually add the selection of each user using the commissioner view. So this could be if you did it offline, if you did it over a messenger, if you had everyone there all together and you're putting sticky notes up on the wall, which is a cool idea. I'd, lo I'd love to do that one day. That would be pretty epic. But that's, um, that's the commissioner thing. Don't click that if you just want everyone to be clicking on their computers and doing it themselves because it all has to be input from one computer. So they are live is the best way to do it in the way that most people will so next thing in the season so this is how your league's going to be set up so you've got a variety of league sizes as few as four coaches all the way up to 20 which would be absolute mayhem but you know usually it's a 10 or 12 that's what a lot of coaches do i'm in a keeper league with eight and that's really cool because it's an intimate sort of group um that works like that but i think you know 10 or 12 is the the standard 10 is probably if you wanted to call it bang right on that's exactly what most people do our bacon cup league is 12 it has been 14 before which does get big um because obviously that means that you're drafting more players depending on the size of your leagues as well um and then draft day can be a bit different too because you've got that long between picks in there so let's call it a 10 um league start so you can start anytime you want but most leagues would start round one you would think um as you are setting that up now play each other you can either play each other once or flexible um I guess the, the idea of the flexible is that you would play throughout the season longer, essentially. That's the main part of that. So if you play each other once and there's only 10 teams in the league, you're only going to have nine roster games and that's all you would have. So um, flexible isn't bad and it is the luck of the draw. Like you might play a, a spud coach twice or you might play the good coach twice. That's just the luck of the draw. Play buy around. So this is for the mid-season buys only. So if you've got those on, that means you would play rounds 12 13 14 15 as normal obviously there's some big buys there because there are a couple of them um the 14 and 15 have the six teams on the buy so that is massive for draft like it really sucks so we normally turn them off that's what our setting is for that now the ladder tiebreaker this is the percentage which is just normal percentage you know points for and against all those points for you can't play defense in fantasy footy so i like the points for being the determining factor. It doesn't get you higher up on the ladder, only if you've got the same amount of wins or points there in the ladder um, as another coach. So if you've scored more points, you deserve to be that one spot higher on the ladder. Um, lockout, so there's three different ones. Standard lockout, that is, as it says here. So um, you've got their players locked at the start of the first game of the round. Um, that does include if it is the Wednesday or a Thursday, like there is a Wednesday this year because of Anzac uh, round. Uh, so that's pretty brutal, especially in draft and especially with those before you know full teams. My favourite is the Saturday lockout. That's the first game on Saturday. Uh, but, this, uh, but the rolling lockout is probably where... My most leagues go with their draft teams because it's not like you're really doing heaps of manipulating, but um, that's where I like for that. So I keep that as run or cut. Play finals, of course, that's what we play fantasy leagues for. We want to play in the finals there. Now, the finals format. So we're in a 12 to a 10 team league here. So I like the half number. So five is good. 
Okay, so how you set up there and, um, you know, 12-team leagues, I'd use a six. If you've got eight like we do in our um, keeper league, I'd do a top four. So half's like a nice number. You can do whatever you want, though. So let's click on five for our half. Now, if you do pay up for the... Um, Pay up for our pro subscription. You can uh, get some different things. You can change how your finals start, the start round of those, and the finals length. So you can manipulate that and you work that out. Coach's box where you can chat as well. All right, next one we've got here is the draft. And this is when it is. But firstly, the time limits. You've either got 60-second picks, two-minute picks, five-minute picks, 15, 60, 12, and 24 hours. Okay, normally 60 seconds is what we go for. Two minutes isn't too bad, um, but obviously it just stretches things out and how you want that to happen. Um, I know Calvin's ADHD doesn't cope for any longer than 60-second picks. I'd like probably 90 seconds. Maybe that could be an improvement for the future. When do you use the bigger ones? Like a 12-hour thing? We do our um, Keeper League redrafts over a slow draft. So you've got 24 hours, so a uh, 12 hours, sorry, we use. So if you do... If it last pick's done at, you know, 10 o'clock at night, old mate is already asleep. He, at least he can wake up and see the next pick. Surely not many people sleep more than 12 hours, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's what we go for there. So we'll go a 60-second pick for this, and then you can set your draft uh, date and time. So I'm just making this up. Let's go on my birthday, 8th of March. Let's do it while we're watching the footy that night. Um, so let's go, yeah, 19, 19, uh, whatever, 45. That'll do, just to have a random time there. Uh, the draft turn type. So you've got snake or linear. So how that works is basically snake draft. If you've got pick one, it'll go all the way through to our pick 10, and then 10th get picks pick 11, and then 9th get pick 12, and so on. So if you're pick one, you get pick 1 and 20. But then they turn back around and get 21. So it snakes around, it loops like a snake. And that's how that works. Info there, it works and lets you know that. Right, line up, that's where you can set what you want. Captains, we like to have captains on. Um, there are some arguments where you don't want to have captains. I'm not going to get into that, but basically double points. As works as always, you get your vice captain as part of that too. Um, but yeah, captains, the reason I may not want captains on if I had a massive league. So if I was, you know, that 14 plus coaches in a league, maybe that makes it hard for that person down the lower end of the draft order. But I tell you what, that doesn't mean that they don't get the best captain each week. That's the thing. Um, so your different players or different positions you've got the the four standard ones there defenders midfielders rucks and forwards and they all obviously go off the positions that we have been allocated from champion data you can have as few as one player per position right up to nine and that goes across all four positions so that's um you can flex be as flexible as you want i like um for our leagues because it's sort of about our engagement of our guys um three four one three so that's what I'll have, three defenders, four midfielders, one ruck and three forwards. Don't mind the four, five, one, four. And in our keeper league, because there's only eight teams in the comp and a lot of 10-team leagues like to use the uh, five, seven, one, five. And that's not bad. As you'll notice this year, though, it gets pretty brutal in the, uh, well, all positions. Even midfielders get a little bit scary with those sorts of lineups, But um, with the forward line, it is pretty, pretty bad, which is fun as well, I guess. That's the other side of it, that... We are taking some lottery picks there. Interchange, you can have as few as one, all the way up to whoo, 40, as you can see. So um, 40 is big for, especially for those um, dynasty-type leagues or big keeper leagues that you're going there. Some people like to have lists of 40 plus. You can go a heap with that. Can't do the math now, but you can get a massive list well over, geez, 60-odd, I guess, more if you really wanted to go too deep, but that's how that works. Um, you can, in this pro, you can choose not to have the dual position updates come in. So we get those after round, this year, after round six, after round 11, after round 17, those dual position updates come in. But if you don't want those for your league, which in draft is, um, it's a fair call if you don't want them and, and you don't want them there. But if you um, want don't want them, then you need to get the pro subscription for that. But otherwise, they'll come in and that makes... You know, Adds a little bit more strategy to your draft day, but also during the season as you hit those free agents, which we'll get to in a moment. Emergencies, that works just like um, our normal emergencies. You can pick one per position. So um, the number of emergencies is a bit of a weird one. This one down here, though, the emergency time on ground thresholds, that's what TOG stands for, time on ground threshold. That's part of the pro. What you get with that is you can choose, and I can't click on it, but you can choose some different increments of your... Um, 
if a player plays less than whatever percentage that is, so let's say it's set to 25%, someone gets injured in the first quarter, so they've played 20% time on ground, then what that would mean that your emergency gets activated, which I do like as a bit of a rule maybe in the future for our um, classic game. We've talked about that for quite a few years. So that's something that um, could come in the future. I guess there'll be plenty of surveys and polls around that if we were to look at that. But you've got that option here in draft, which is in draft probably an important place for it to be because it can really screw a matchup and a fixture with that. Trade and free agents, how this works. So if you have it off, Basically, as soon as um, you can pick up players at any time. So um, if you can drop someone, pick someone up, that is you can do that whenever you want. So as soon as lockout lifts, it's the first in best dress, which sucks because not everyone can be on there for that. And you don't just want the most active coach getting that. So I put them on and you can have one day. So you've got one day to um, go and make your selections and then hope that you get that selection or you can whack that out to two days as well. One day is pretty good, but if you've got a very casual league, maybe two days is important with that. How do you do it? It's set there to last pick um, to um, last pick to bottom. So that is what you would do if you just want to go off what your drafting order was. But the best way and for more equitable stuff is through the reverse ladder order. So if you're reverse ladder, you pretty much, whoever's on the bottom will get first dibs. So someone smashes it in that round. Um, when restricted free agents, you can go and choose someone. Um, they will have first dibs on that. So after that one day or two days, um, the time period is over, they would be the first one to get it if they selected them. But it goes on who was the lowest on the ladder to get them, which is a fair way to go. Uh, restricted free agency, a privacy. You want it to be private because you don't want everyone to see who's selecting who because otherwise, yeah, that that bottom of the ladder pick who w didn't see a player or wouldn't find one and say, oh, a good coach like Warndog goes and selects one, they might just choose that to snaveling before me so that's something there and then the trade approval options so there's a few ones here league approved so that means that everyone does it as it says in here oh, it doesn't really tell us but <laughs> league approved they have to like basically vote essentially to say that that's okay commissioner approved which is a nice easy one to have um if you trust your commissioner if they're good like me um they just go yep I tick off that trade essentially or free for all as soon as the trade has gone through between the two parties then tick it goes through which is fine for most leagues but if you've got blokes that like to collude or you have any drums with it that's important right scoring so this is where you can go it's set up as the standard scoring that we're all used to in AFL fantasy you can change those values from minus 10 through to 20 so there's a lot of flexibility with what you do here. So um, if you want to have goals worth more, for example, because you feel like you want to bring key forwards into the game more in the fantasy, everything will adjust and the scoring will be that whatever you put in here. So it's pretty sweet like that. You might make them 10 points, for example. Um, all different things. You get all the little definitions of what the stat is. So that's handy to know, especially for people that aren't sure what they mean. And you see the ones with the locks on here. These are part of the pro subscription. These are the advantages advanced stats so this is where you can really customize your scoring system people like to talk about how the system um you know fantasy scoring is so basic we want to change it you can here um yeah everything there's a lot of stuff in here so goal assists you get can have points for that uh Dispose, effective disposal, ineffective disposal. So you might make, instead of having points for kicks or handballs, you might just go effective disposal worth four, ineffective worth two. So you get more for an effective kick. Um, you can take points off for um, a clanger. You can add more for clearances, stuff like that, to really benefit the players that are better at the game. So also bringing key defenders, you might get spoils in there. Um, even some of those contested marks are really good too to bring in some of those taller players too. So it just changes things a little bit if you want to make that um, more, well, I guess a bit more, um, yeah, more real if you want to call it that. I know people like to say that with that <coughs> super coach game that it's better. You can make yours even better than that with your own scoring system. So that is the scoring part. And finally, Keeper League, if you want to start a keeper league, this is what you do. You enable it, and then the number of keeper players. So because we're uh, the way I set it up, it was like the the three, four, one, three, and four on the bench. Um, 
there's 15 players in our squad. We might choose, oh, let's keep 10 each year. So we're redrafting five players each new season. So we have to only keep 10 players. So when it comes around to 2025, we'd be able to click on the 10 players that we're keeping and then we'll have a redraft for those last five. So in our keeper league, so we've got squads of 30. So we play that 5 7 one, 5 and that means we've got 12 on the bench. We keep 14. So we've got to lock those in this weekend, actually, and then start our slow draft. Uh, on Sunday night. So that's something that, um, yeah, it's up to you how you want to do it. A bit of a rule of thumb. If it's your first go at it, like half your squad's not a bad sort of thing, and that's where we sort of started with the 14. I know that's not half a 30, but about that, that's where we um, landed with ours. So we are turning enough over our list that they on-field players would need to be redrafted is what it's about. So so there's a bit more into that draft day because that's the fun part of it. And that's what draft's all about. So we're very excited about our draft coming up. It's actually tonight we are playing our um, Bacon Cup. So my pre-draft, I haven't done any rankings or whatever yet. And ooh, I need to go and set our... Um, I know Bacon Cup Keeper, apologies, I'm in the wrong one there. Bacon Cup, uh, our normal single season draft. And we've got all the players um, ready to go. We haven't locked them in yet, so we haven't just got the list. That's why Tim English is still on that list there. And, yeah, we've got our draft order. Oh, sorry, this is a single season, so he, of course he's there. Um, yeah, Roy's got first pick and... Yeah, you can see our order. Now, a couple of things. This is where a few commissioners might like to get a few tips. So under the settings, it's where you can update your settings. So you can go into like what I just showed you there. You can also go into your edit your team name. So you know how your team name basically comes up as what you've got for your classic team. You can change that for your different draft leagues. Invite coaches, yep, simple as inviting them into it. We've got our league full. Manage teams, so... I've, um, un- I've locked my league or finalised my participants, so um, you should do that. But from there, you can unlock that and you can remove coaches from the league from that setting. Uh, where are we? Manage draft order. So this is our draft order. So we had ours worked out this week. Um, basically, one of our league members there, and that is Adrian, you had to put in a prediction for the run scored on the first day of the Australian-New Zealand test over at the Basin. And uh, we put our... Um, we put our guesses in, and from there, uh, pretty much determined the draft order. And I went very high because I wanted to pick down the bottom near the end, but Calvin went a bit higher than me. So um, we've got 11 and 12. So we'll be close to that turn. That's what we like about that. But that's how you do it. And you do it just by essentially clicking and dragging. Um, that's got it. Or you can just write the numbers in there or shuffle them up and down. So it's the ways that you can do that. So that's an important part of it. Um, yeah, they're the main settings there. They do change once the season starts as well. So that is draft. And we are super excited about this season starting for our draft. We've got ours tonight. Eight hours, ten minutes. Woo! It's getting very close. So um, if you are first-time drafters, Good luck. Have fun. Go and get yourselves organised and have a lot of fun this season. That's what it's all about, the old uh, the fantasy draft competition. So, um, yeah, hopefully that helped you. And if you are a new commissioner um, or a new coach to it, they might be some tips to help you get set up. Uh, leave in the comments what settings you use and things like that. So, um, yeah, good luck for this season. We are counting down. It's not too far until the start of the season. So, good luck to everyone out there. We'll see you later.